sometimes when we need to find the derivative of a of an object or find the rate of change of something it's not always possible to find it directly so we need to find it in terms of a third variable and that's where the chain rule comes into play so what we're going to be looking at in this video is something called related rates so before we do that uh, we're going to apply the chain rule and have a look at some simple examples of how we can introduce a third variable in order to find the rate of change between two variables and we've been doing that whenever we need to use the chain rule, as I've mentioned. So let's have a look at a couple of examples. Um, if you look at the first example on the screen, we've got dv dr is equal r to equal to 5r and dr to t is equal to 2. So this would be, as an example for question A, the rate of change of volume with respect to the radius is 5 times the radius. And the rate of change of the radius with respect to time is equal to 2. So the question then is, well, what's the rate of change of volume with respect to time? So as time changes, how does the volume change? So, well, if we think about the chain rule, now the introduced variable in this case is the radius. So if we look at dv to t, then we can write that as dv dr times dr to t. And that's using the chain rule. So we've introduced the variable r. And so we could quickly work that out. So dv dr is 5r multiplied by dr to t, which is 2. So that then the rate of change of volume with respect to time would be 10r. Pretty simple. All right, what about the second example? So in this case, we've got dp dn is equal to 4n. And we've got dp to t is equal to 6. So again, you've got the rate of change of p with respect to n and the rate of change with p with respect to t, which usually is time. The question says, well, what's the n to t? So how does n change with respect to t? All right, so, well, if we, if we want to write dn to t, well, we've got rates of change with regard to p, so we might use p as our introduced variable. So therefore, using our chain rule, it's going to be dn over d introduced variable multiplied by that introduced variable. Oh, I didn't want to give it away. Uh, over dt. So we can see the structure. And as you mentioned, right, as I've already given away, we're going to use dp to t and dn to p as our introduced variable. So we have a look at that dn to p. Well, I don't have dn to p, but I do have dp dn. So if dp dn is 4n, then dp is 1 over 4n. It's the reciprocal. And multiplied by dp to t, which we've already got is 6. So therefore, I've got 6 over 4n, which is 3 over 2n. We're fine. And that's the answer to that one there. All right, so let's have and another quick example just to remind ourselves. Very easy question. If a is 5a, h squared minus 5h, then what's to a to h? And h equals 2. Okay, we have been working on integrals for so long. I thought I'd throw this one in just to make sure that we're all okay. We can differentiate this pretty quickly, I'm assuming. 2h minus 5. So da to h at h equals 2 is going to be negative 1. It's just very, very simple. Okay, so that's introducing a variable. <clears throat> Nothing really new there. Let's talk about a couple of things to remind ourselves. Um, we're going to look at the idea that if, it, if a rate is increasing, then it's positive, um, whereas a decreasing rate is negative. And if, because we're going to be looking at generally um, mensuration, so uh, surface area and volume, there's a couple of volume and surface area formulas just to remind you that they exist. All right, so let's have a look at a couple more examples here. So a balloon is being filled with air at a rate of 150 cubic centimetres per second. Assuming that the balloon remains spherical, that's a key point there, what is the rate, at what, at what rate, sorry, is the radius changing when it reaches three centimetres? At what rate is the radius changing? Well, one thing to note there, it doesn't tell us what the radius is changing with respect to, okay? So I'm just gonna come back to our previous screen 
and look at the very first point there. So the rates of change are given with respect to time, unless otherwise stated. So we're going to assume in this case that the rate of the radius changing is we want to know the rate of change in radius with respect to time. And that's what we want to know at r equals 3 centimetres. So once the radius of the balloon reaches 3 centimetres, at what rate is it increasing in volume? Oh, no, sorry. At what rate is the radius changing with respect to time? Okay, so what do we know? Okay, first of all, we're told that the volume, the balloon is spherical. So if the balloon is spherical, then the volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. A reminder that these formulas are all, the volume formulas for different shapes are all on your formula sheet for specialist maths. So we know that. Um, we're also told that the balloon is being filled with air at the rate of 150 cubic centimetres per second. Well, cubic centimetres per second is a volume with respect to time. So we're told that the rate of change of volume with respect to time is 150. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. So we want dr to t. Let's create an expression for that or an equation for that. So dr to t. Well, that's going to be dr to something multiplied by to something to t. So that's going to be using a chain rule. So I'm probably going to use volume because I'm talking about volume. So let's use volume here and volume here. <clears throat> well, I know to v to t. That's good. I've got the 150, but I don't know dr to v. But as you can see over here, I could very easily find to VDR and then find the reciprocal. So to VDR, well, 3 times 4 thirds is 4 pi r squared. So therefore, if I want to use dr, dr to V, that's going to be 1 over 4 pi r squared multiplied by to V to T, which is 150. So we've got 150 over 4 pi r squared. And then at r equals 3 centimetres, the r to t is going to be called, <coughs> excuse me, 150 over 4 pi times 3 squared. Okay, and we can simplify yeah. that to be something like 25 on 6 pi. Uh, and our units, so radius is in centimetres. And our time is in seconds, so our units are centimetres per second. Okay, so here's a second example. A conical tank full of water loses water at a rate of 1.2 cubic metres per minute. Okay, so let's write down the information as we see it. So a conical tank, all right, so it's a conical tank and we've got water in it at a volume. So what we need to do is remind ourselves, well, what's the volume of a cone? Well, the volume of a cone is the volume of a cylinder, so pi r squared height, and it's a third of that. And again, that'll be on your formula sheet. Okay, so it loses water at a rate of 1.2 cubic metres per minute. Well, that's a rate of change of volume with respect to time. And it loses water, so that's going to be negative 1.2 metres cubed per minute. I'm going to write minute in full, otherwise I'll get myself confused when a tap at the bottom is turned on. If the surface radius of the water, oh, okay, so the radius of the water is always equal to two thirds of the depth. Okay, so two thirds of the depth. So in this particular cone, because I'm talking about a cone like this, then the depth is going to be the same uh, variable as the height. So I'm going to call it height. And find the rate at which the water is changing when the depth is two meters. So, okay, so I want I want to h to t, the rate at which the depth is changing at uh, h equals two meters. Okay, so water's running out of the bottom. Shh, at the bottom it goes. Okay, so we need to work out dh to t. All right, so let's create an equation for dh to t like we've done before, so to h to t, well, volume is going to be our 
um, introduced variable in this case. So it's going to be to h dv multiplied by dv into t. And once again, we've got dv to t, and it's easy. So it's to h dv we want. Well, to h dv is 1 over dv to h. And dv to h is the derivative of volume with respect to height. So we know the volume is one third pi times r squared h. Now you'll notice I've got two variables here. I want to differentiate with respect to height, but I've got the radius in the way. So the beauty of that is I've got this relationship here. So we've got to introduce, we've got information that we can use. So therefore we're told that the radius is two thirds the height. So that's going to be squared multiplied by h. So that's going to be one third times pi times two. So that's going to be four ninths. So I've got four ninths times a third. So that's going to be four, three nines at 27. So four on 27 pi times h cubed. Mm, okay. So therefore, to v to h is going to equal 12 on 27, which is 4 ninths, pi times h squared. Okay, so now I've got that information, I can now solve. So come back over here, to h to v uh, is going to be 1 over 4 ninths, pi times h squared, multiplied by dv to t, which is negative 1.2. Okay, um, so we can play around with this a little bit um, and you can simplify that down to be negative uh, 10.8 over uh, pi h cubed, uh, 4 pi h squared. Um, I'll let you work that one out for yourself. It's reasonably simple arithmetic. Okay, so we know we're looking at uh, h equals 2. So the rate of change of height with respect to time is going to be negative 10.8 over 4 pi times 2 squared. And that simplifies down to be approximately equal to negative 0.215 meters per minute. Again, we need the units. It's very important. Height is in meters. Time is in minutes. So we need to make sure that we give our units. So that's what we call related rates, and where we introduce a variable in order to help us find the uh, the rate of change of a third of another variable. Okay, so there's some examples for you to have a go at. Um, good luck.